Do you dream of fairies and princesses? Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly, and in today's House of Mouse headlines, some updates about the upcoming Halloween festivities in the parks, the Sherman Brothers get another major honor, and Galaxy's Edge is shaping up. That and so much more, so let's get to it. Hear the latest news from the Walt Disney Company in today's House of Mouse headlines. The Sherman Brothers have been given many honors by the Walt Disney Company, including Disney Legends Awards and a window on Main Street USA at Disneyland. But that wasn't enough to honor these two men who have made a massive influence at the Walt Disney Company with their music. On July 30th, 2018, Stage A at the Walt Disney Studios lot was officially dubbed the Sherman Brothers Stage. At the ceremony, Richard Sherman said, It's been a joy, it's been an honor, and it's been a privilege to work here at the Walt Disney Studios, working for Walt Disney and for all the brilliant, brilliant people with whom Bob and I associated through the years. Congratulations to Richard Sherman and the late Robert Sherman for this incredible, well-deserved honor. It certainly is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. For several months now during Pixar Fest, guests at the Disneyland Resort have been enjoying Together Forever, a Pixar nighttime spectacular. But that nighttime spectacular will be ending its run when Pixar Fest ends this September. But with one show leaving, Disneyland brings back its best fireworks show in my opinion. Remember, dreams come true, beginning on Friday, September 7th, 2018. This fireworks spectacular first debuted during the park's 50th anniversary celebration in 2005, but it's always welcomed back warmly to the park by guests. If you've never seen this fireworks show and have the opportunity, it is a must-see. It's sort of a musical review of so many of the attractions you've experienced in the park throughout the day. I truly love it, and it gives me all the feels. This Halloween season, the Disneyland Resort is welcoming Vampirina to the parks. If you're not familiar with Vampirina, Disney Parks blog describes her this way. Vampirina blends spooky fun, heartfelt storytelling, and Broadway-caliber music and stories that follow Vampirina, also known as V, as she faces the joys and trials of being the new kid in town, including making friends and attending a new school in the human world. Along the way, V learns that it may be easier to blend in with her peers, but it's more valuable to celebrate the qualities that make each individual unique. Vampirina will be arriving at Disneyland Resort this fall for Halloween time. You'll get to meet her at Disney California Adventure Park starting September 7th, and V will also be making special appearances during the Frightfully Fun Parade at Mickey's Halloween Party. Later this year, she'll also join the high-energy cast of Disney Junior Dance Party. Starting September 30th, Vampirina will be making visits to Walt Disney World Resort as well, where she'll join her pals for breakfast at Disney Junior Play and Dine. Later this fall at Disney's Hollywood Studios, you'll have a chance to meet her in the Animation Courtyard, and of course, she'll be part of the fun at the all-new Disney Junior Dance Party. Also new at Walt Disney World this Halloween season is a new playing card for the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom game. This new card will feature Orange Bird. If you aren't familiar with Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, it's an in-park interactive card-based game where guests can help Merlin stop the Disney villains from taking over the Magic Kingdom. Guests search for magic portals located throughout the park and use their spell cards to stop the villains. This special card will only be distributed during Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Speaking of Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, it has been announced that Disney Vacation Club members attending the party will be getting an extra bonus. The Halloween party officially begins at 7 p.m., but guests with tickets to the party are given access to the park beginning at 4 p.m. to enjoy attractions during normal park hours. But now for DVC members, you can not only get in at 4 p.m., but you can actually enter the park at 2 p.m., giving you pretty much a full day's access to Magic Kingdom Park. If you'd like to take advantage of this offer, just bring your DVC card along with your Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party ticket to the front gate. Since opening day of Disney's Animal Kingdom, the Festival of the Lion King show has been immensely popular among guests. Get ready to receive the royal treatment at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park with two all-new Festival of the Lion King signature dining packages. Simba and his friends are inviting you to join in on the festivities with a delicious meal at Tiffin's Restaurant, followed by special VIP seating at one of the most popular shows at Walt Disney World Resort. 
Along with your meal, you'll receive special vouchers for priority reserved VIP seating at Festival of the Lion King, a Broadway-style show filled with pageantry, puppetry, and popular songs from the film. You'll even receive a commemorative cast photo that captures the moment forever. With the Tier 1 dining package, you'll get to continue the fun with a unique safari tour through the African outback, where over 34 distinct wildlife species seemingly roam free. Escorted by a special guide, you'll ride through rugged terrain to see some of the world's most exotic animals in their unique habitats. Tour guides will provide interesting information on the land and its residents for an expedition you'll never forget. Over at Epcot, the American Heritage Gallery inside the American Adventure Lobby recently got an upgrade. A brand new art exhibit, Creating Tradition, Innovation, and Change in American Indian Art, just debuted. The 89 pieces on display represent 40 different American Indian tribes from seven geographic regions across the United States. So the next time you're walking through the American Pavilion at Epcot, take a moment to stop inside and check out this new edition. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is being constantly watched by bloggers and fans alike, and we all recently got a treat as the first spaceship has arrived inside Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disney's Hollywood Studios. It is getting real. As a reminder, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland is scheduled to open in the summer of 2019, and Walt Disney World's is scheduled to open in the late fall of 2019. Peeking over the construction walls at the Disney parks isn't the only way to learn more about the new Star Wars Planet of Batuu, which is where we'll be visiting in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. You can also find more information about the planet in the new novel, Thrawn Alliances. The novel focuses on Padme's visit to Batuu, giving us more details and backstory of this planet. Also, apparently Disney has filed another patent for presumably Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, or maybe the upcoming Star Wars Hotel. In the patent, Disney says, Robots may be used for entertainment, utilitarian, and or other purposes. A plurality of robots may be deployed in an environment and programmed to carry out one or more tasks. A plurality of robots in such a scenario may be referred to as a robot swarm. It is often desired for the robots within the swarm to be aware of each other. And the words of Bob Iger, holy crap. Now for a story I'm happy to share because it brings a bit of Disney magic to folks outside of Southern California and Orlando. The Void's Star Wars Secrets of the Empire has been very successful at both Downtown Disney and Disney Springs, so now they're adding yet another location in the Mall of America in Minnesota. This is just one of numerous locations where the Void will be expanding. There are also rumors swirling around that the Void will be bringing a new VR game this holiday season to promote the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph. Speaking of VR, Marvel fans will be happy to hear that the new game Marvel Powers United VR is now available on Oculus and will feature the characters Black Bolt, Black Panther, Black Widow, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Crystal, Deadpool, Doctor Strange, Gamora, Hawkeye, The Hulk, Iceman, Rocket Raccoon, Spider-Man, Star-Lord, Storm, Thor, and Wolverine. Battlegrounds include Asgard, The Dark Dimension, Downtown New York, Half-World, Jotunheim, sorry if that's wrong, Nowhere Marketplace, Sakar Arena, The Palace of Adalon, Wakanda, and X-Mansion Hangar. That's a lot of stuff that just went way over my head, but I hope that it's all exciting news for you. The three caballeros are about to be reunited on the DuckTales reboot during Season 2. Also, apparently Don Cheadle will voice Donald Duck in the first season's finale as Donald's voice becomes far more coherent. That's, um, interesting. Fans of The Rock, rejoice! We got our first look at the Jungle Cruise movie with a cute little teaser from Disney featuring Emily Blunt and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The teaser didn't really show us much more other than a jungle location and the two actors in costume, but it certainly did show us how fun and playful Emily Blunt and Dwayne Johnson are together. I just want to say on record that I will be very disappointed if a joke isn't added into the Jungle Cruise attraction spiel where your skipper says something like, oh look, there's the star of the new hit Disney film Jungle Cruise, and then points to a rock. Christopher Robin did come out this weekend. I hope all of you out there seeing it have been enjoying the movie. And I do want to remind you that this upcoming Friday, August 10th, the Disney Channel original movie Freaky Friday, based on the stage musical from Disney Theatrical, will be premiering. So be sure to check that out this Friday on Disney Channel. I also want to give a shout out to Alan Barajas, who left a five-star review on iTunes saying, Best Disney Podcast Ever. 
Thank you, Alan. Listening from Tijuana, Mexico, this podcast is definitely my go-to Disney fix. Always looking forward to that hour-long weekly topic and the end of the week news. Jeff has so many awesome guests, and even the topics that don't seem to be of my interest hook me. The perfect word to describe this podcast is magical. I've only been listening for three months now, but I went back to listen to most all episodes. It's totally worth it. Congrats on having such an amazing show. Thank you so much, Alan. That is such a sweet review. Guys, if you want to leave a five-star review on iTunes, it would be very much appreciated. It helps other Disney fans find the show more easily, so please head there and leave a five-star written review. And of course, before we go, i got to get to this week's Twitter poll. On this week's Twitter poll, I asked you all, the worst part about summer in the Disney parks is the crowds or the heat. And for the first time ever, we have a dead tie. 50% went to crowds and 50% went to heat. So I guess they're both equally terrible. If you want to be part of the Twitter vote, make sure you follow D-I-Z-N-E-Y-C-T-C on Twitter, where we do a Twitter poll every single week. If you want more bonuses and rewards, make sure you head to patreon.com slash DCTC, where I actually recently posted an audio commentary watching a video of Phantasmic 2.0. A while back, I did a whole episode about Phantasmic 2.0 sharing my opinions, and people kept asking me more and more about my thoughts, so I thought I'd record an audio commentary for the Patreon supporters, so check that out over at patreon.com slash DCTC. Also, don't forget it's a new month, which means there's a new music playlist out there. Head to DisneyCoastToCoast.com, click on Playlist, and sign up for that. This episode of Disney Coast to Coast was produced by Philip Elke, who has supported the show through Patreon. If you'd like to become a DCTC producer or gain other rewards, more information can be found at Patreon.com slash DCTC. Other than that, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for watching Disney Coast to Coast! Have a magical day! <laughs> Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com.